Hello, welcome to New Light Guide to NFCs with React Native. In this course, we will explore NFC and React Native together. First, here is a little about me. My name is Richie, and I will be your instructor during this course. I'm also the author of React Native NFC Manager Library, which is widely adopted when people develop NFC applications with React Native. I'm very happy to share my knowledge with you. NFC, as you might already know, is a wireless technology for short-range communication. It is already widely used in our daily life. Let's see some practical use cases. First is payment. Apple Pay and Samsung Pay both use NFC. Transportation and ticketing system. For example, the Suica in Japan uses NFC. Access control and security systems. Lots of applications for this domain choose NFC to be their communication protocol. Even in gaming, Nintendo Amiibo also uses NFC to exchange data between the Amiibo figure and Nintendo Switch. Among these use cases, we will focus on how to build mobile apps to interact with NFC tags. First, I will provide an overview of NFC technology in the next lesson. After that, we will build three apps along this course. App 1 is a game app to count how much time a user needs to scan five NFC tags. You will learn how to properly set up an NFC project and how to trigger the scanning. App 2 is about NDAF, which is the standard NFC data format, well supported by both iOS and Android, and can be used for almost any NFC tag. We will build an NFC reader writer app to write specific links into NFC tags, so later on they can be used to trigger specific actions. For example, open an URL, make a phone call, or send a message. At the end of this module, we will cover how to use deep links with NFC tags. F3 is about low-level NFC programming, which directly manipulates the NFC tags internal memory and also uses proprietary NFC commands. The app we'd like to build is called NFC Pokemon, which is a digital identity management platform it can seal a specific Pokemon, for example, a Pikachu, into an NFC tag. During building this app, we will also learn how to create digital signatures and use a proprietary password protection command to free our NFC Pokemon tags from attack. This course is for NFC beginners, so advanced topic will not be covered here. NFC, as derived from RFID, has lots of existing standards. We won't cover NFC operation mode other than reader mode, and we won't cover NFC tag types other than type 2. We will talk more about these te terminologies in the next lesson. We won't show you every API and parameter for the React Native NFC library either, since our goal is to make you comfortable writing an NFC app rather than being an API reference. The basic understanding of React Native is required. A mobile phone with NFC feature, because NFC feature cannot be tested using simulator. If you are an iOS user, all iPhones come after iPhone 7 have NFC support. Please note that iPad doesn't have NFC, only iPhone does. On the other hand, if you are an Android user, you should check your phone's settings. For Android phones that have NFC support, you should be able to find the NFC-related menu in your connectivity settings. 
And if you are an iPhone user, you will also need to enroll in the Apple Developer Program to test your app on your iPhone. Finally, you need some NFC tags. We choose NXP NTech 213 or 215 for this course. These are the most used low-cost NFC tags and can be purchased easily from Amazon. In the next lesson, I will give you a more detailed introduction to NFC technology. I will see you there. Hello, in this lesson, I will give you a more detailed introduction to NFC. First thing first, what is NFC? NFC stands for Near Field Communication. It is a wireless communication protocol. A little about its history. It is rooted in RFID and funded by Sony, Philips, and Nokia. The standard organization for NFC is called NSC Forum, and almost all NFC specifications are defined by NFC Forum. Being a wireless technology, NFC has a pretty short range, typically within 10 centimeters. It also has a relatively low bit rate, which is below 424 kbps. Let's compare NFC to other well-known wireless technologies such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. As you can see, NFC has a much limited range and much slower speed. Typically, when we perform wireless technology comparison, we want them to have long distance and faster speed. However, when talks about NFC, these disadvantages actually become advantages. Why so? Because of the short range, NFC provides more privacy and security, since the attackers cannot hack you from place too far. And because of the low bit rate, NFC is extremely effective for power consumption. As a mobile app developer, this basically told us the NFC won't drain the mobile phone's battery. This point also brings us to a unique feature regarding NFC, that is, the NFC tag doesn't need to carry a battery. This is pretty mind-blowing. In our common sense, almost any consumer electronics require batteries or other kind of power source, like an adapter plugged into a wall. NFC technology achieved this by an asymmetry design. On the left-hand side of this diagram, an NFC reader creates an electromagnetic field. And as we all know, electromagnetic fields can induce electricity. So the NFC tag on the right-hand side couples its power solely from the reader. Let's also introduce some NFC terminologies. First is the device role. The NFC reader in our diagram is called an initiator because it starts the entire communication process. On the other hand, the NFC tag is called a target. We also call the communication mode to be passive mode because the target can only respond to the initiator's command passively. It cannot actively send any data to the initiator. Target devices without batteries usually use passive mode. Of course, we also have the so-called active communication mode. In this mode, the target must have its own power to send data actively to the initiator. Finally, is the NFC operation mode. We call an NFC device is in reader mode when it acts as an NFC reader. Besides this reader mode, the NFC forum also defines other operation modes, which are peer-to-peer -peer mode, card emulation mode, as well as the latest wireless charging mode.
which are not being widely adapted yet. The NFC Reader mode allows the NFC device to read or write passive NFC tags and stickers. Most of the NFC applications we mentioned above is in this mode, such as the transportation or ticketing system, even the kit car to open a Tesla's car door are all operated in this mode. The NFC car emulation mode allows the NFC device itself to act as an NFC card. The emulated NFC card can then be accessed by other NFC reader, such as a point-of-sale machine. The best example of this mode is Apple Pay. In this case, the iPhone becomes a contactless credit card and we can then use it in merchant stores. Finally is the NFC peer-to-peer -peer mode. It allows the NFC device to exchange data with another NFC peer. One example for this mode is the Android Bean feature introduced by Google back to 2011. Besides that, this mode is not widely used in the real world. Let's take a look at the mobile platform support for NFC. Let's check Android first. The Android supports NFC quite early since API level 10. It supports all three operation modes originally, but Google has deprecated NFC peer-to-peer -peer related API in API level 29. The iOS, on the other hand, supports NFC from iOS 13 and iPhone 7, and it only supports reader mode. The car emulation mode is only available for their own app such as Apple Pay. That's why in this course, we will focus on reader mode applications. Next, let's see this NFC specification diagram. As you can see, this diagram groups related NFC specification vertically by the operation modes. It seems scary initially. However, as a real native developer, we will focus on these two blocks. They are NDEF and Type 2 to Type 5 tag specifications. Let's talk about NDEF first. NDEF stands for NFC Data Exchange Format. It's defined by NFC Forum and aim to provide a tag independent way to allow data exchange between NFC enabled devices. It is often used to carry text based data such as URLs or contact info. NDEF is well supported by both iOS and Android since most of the NFC tags contain NDEF data. So, understanding it is very important for your NFC journey. We have a dedicated module discussing NDEF. In the second app we are about to build, we will show you how to read and write NDEF into NFC tags, and also explain how to use NFC tags to trigger deep linking. Another important block for us is the Type 2 to Type 5 specifications. Some people will refer to them as the NFC tag platform. Let's use the Type 2 tag platform as an example. Oh, by the way, people in NFC domain often use T2T instead of the full Type 2 tag platform. Again, NFC forum defines what a Type 2 tag should comply with. The specification covers the topics such as the memory structure and the basic command set such as read and writes, which allows us to directly communicate with the NFC tag. When we are designing an NFC application, sometimes using NDEF is not enough. You will need to directly manipulate the NFC tag's internal memory in order to use some advanced feature available for certain NFC tags. Let's see some real-world NFC tags 
and their feature to address this point. This table presents a feature summary for NXP and tag families, which are the most used NFC tags all over the world. Some feature listed in this table, such as AES or 32-bit password, must be configured using low-level tag platform commands rather than NDEF writing. Being able to use these tag proprietary commands allows you to leverage the full power for your NFC tag hardware, so you can create unique NFC applications. We also have a dedicated module targeting Type 2 tags. In the third app of this course, we will not only learn about the basic T2T commands, but also the more advanced password protection feature. Hope you are as excited as I do. In the next module, we will start our journey by creating our very first NFC app, Tech Counter Game. I will see you there. Hello. In order to write NFC apps, our first step is to be able to scan or discover NFC tags. So in this module, we will build a game to count how much time a player needs to scan five times of NFC tag. During the app building process, we will also learn some important concepts about NFC. First, how to properly configure your app, especially for iOS. There are some pre-steps you will need to perform, otherwise your NFC apps will never work. Second, how to use React Native NFC Manager library to discover our NFC tags. Third, since the NFC feature is not supported by all mobile devices, you will need to handle the case when the target device has no NFC feature. Finally, you will also learn how iOS and Android handle NFC events differently. iOS has a default system UI and Android provides none of this. How to produce a similar user experience is an important topic. Let's get started. Hello. Let's first head into the terminal to start a new React Native skeleton project. npx React Native init tech counter game. Before we go any further, I'd like to explain some basic concepts here. In the React Native world, there are actually two approaches to start a new project. One is through Expo COI, and another is through React Native COI. Do you ever wonder when to use which? What is the difference between them? To find out, let's see the explanation on React Native's official site. As you can see, it said, if you are new to mobile development, the easiest way to get started is with Expo COI. If you are already familiar with mobile development, you might want to use React Native COI. From the official docs, it seems that the differences between them are whether you are new or already familiar with mobile development. But there is another difference, which is much more important. That is, whether your app depends on third-party libraries with native code in it. What does this mean? In React Native, there are two kinds of libraries. First one is implemented purely in JavaScript. For example, 
rare native element. Rare native elements is a well-known UI library which provides lots of useful UI component. Since it is a pure UI library, it probably requires no special platform features, so it might be implemented in pure JS. Well, most of the time, but that's not always true. We can see this from the languages area in GitHub page. This project is 96% JavaScript and 3% CSS. On the other hand, let's see the React Native NFC Manager. Let's check the language section again. It's made by 55% JavaScript, 33% Java, and 21% Objective-C for iOS. If your project needs any of these library which contain native codes, you have two options. The first is to use React Native CLI to start your project. So your project will contain native platform code and build environment from day one. This is the approach we will take in this course. Second, use Expo CLI and eject later. Though it's possible, but we won't go any further in this approach. If you are interested, you can visit their website to learn more. Looks like the app has been successfully created, so we can move on. Next step is to perform native setup for Android. It is quite easy to do. Actually, all we have to do is to edit Android app src main Android manifest.xml. The only required modification is to add another user's permission XML element. This basically tells Android we'd like to use NFC. And with this declaration, once we publish our app to Google Play Store, these declared permissions will also be listed on your app's page. Let's take NFC tools for example. As you can see, the NFC permission is listed here. Besides use permission, there's an optional element we can consider to add it. That's uses feature element. This element allowed us to control our application show up in Google Play only for devices that have NFC hardware. What we should consider is whether NFC functionality is crucial for our app. If so, we should add this element. Otherwise, we should omit the user's feature element and check for NFC availability at runtime and I will show you how to do this in later lessons. Finally, let's visit the official Android doc for a quick recap. As you can see, it mentions both user's permission and user's feature. As we just talked about, besides these two, it also mentions uses SDK element. 
This one is used to define the minimum SDK version required for our app. However, since most Android devices now are in the version much higher than API 10, so it's fine to omit it. Finally, let's move on to iOS setup. iOS setup is slightly more complex comparing to Android, so bear with me. You need to make sure you have enrolled Apple Developer Program and also create an application identity for your app because we can only test NFC on real devices. For the bundle ID, we use the reverse domain method. For me, I just put my name here. And for you, please remember to change the middle part. We also need to enable the NFC capabilities. It's here. Then register the app. Then open your project in Xcode. First step, we should change the bundle ID into the one we just created. And then, make sure we are in the right Apple developer team. we should add our NFC capability again. After this step, you should see an entitlement file created in your project. This file is generated by Xcode. At this point, this file should look like this. It should contain a near field communication tech reader session format, which is an array, contain two elements. The first one is NFC data exchange format, and the second one is NFC tech specific data protocol. Finally, edit your info.plist. Now you are good to go. Hello! In this lesson, we will install React Native NFC Manager and then we'll do a quick walkthrough for our NFC library. First, go to your skeleton project, then install React Native NFC Manager. And that will be the only library we depend on for this first app. Besides JavaScript installation, we also need to do native library installation. For iOS in your terminal, go to iOS directory, then do pod install. The pod we just entered stands for CocoaPod. 
for people not aware of CocoaPod. It's a package manager for iOS, kind of like the NPM for JavaScript. For Android, thanks to the React Native Auto Link feature, there's no extra installation step you need to do. You can learn more about Auto Link in this URL. Since a React Native app is also a native app, before we shift our focus back to JavaScript, I want to take this opportunity to show you where you can find the native codes in Platform IDE. For iOS, the IDE is Xcode. To open our project in Xcode, you should identify the XC workspace and open it. You can open it by double-click the XC workspace file in Finder or open iOS slash your project name dot XC workspace. Please be aware, a common mistake here is to accidentally open Xcode project rather than XC workspace. So please be careful. Once Xcode is opened, in left panel, navigate to Pods, Development Pods, React Native NFC Manager. You can see the native codes are indeed included in our project. For Android, launch Android Studio. In the opening screen, choose Open an existing Android Studio project and choose your Android directory to open. Again, also in the left panel, make sure you select Project with either Android or Project View, and you should be able to find the native parts being included in our project. Cool, we just confirmed that our native codes are included in our project. You might wonder, do I really need to use these platform IDEs? The answer is definitely yes, someday. Because when you work with projects that depend on native related libraries from time to time, you will need to perform some troubleshooting tasks. And when encountering such a case, platform IDE will help you a lot. That's why I'd like to take this opportunity to show you where you can find the native code in Platform IDE, even though you might not be super familiar with them. But the bottom line is, don't be afraid, those are just tools. After the touring of Platform IDE, let's do a quick walkthrough of our NFC library. Move to GitHub page. In the README, we can see this library has two use cases. The first, the basic use case is to read text with NDEF data. The second is the advanced use case, which allowed us to use specific NFC technology handler to do technology specific tasks. Let's also do some quick recap of our NFC knowledge mentioned so far. Let's again see the NFC spec overview diagram. First, NDEF is the universal data format for NFC tags. Both Android and iOS platform have good support for it. Second, as you can see, NFC actually has a pretty wild technology landscape. But for mobile apps, which are focused on dealing with NFC tags, what we need to understand is the type 2 to type 5 tag. We can consider a tech type to be a specific technology, which can be mapped to its own handler in our library. Although the library name might not be the same as type 2 handler, it does exist. And in order to deal with those specific NFC technologies or different tech types, some level of domain knowledge is required. We will explore the most well-known NFC technology, that's the Type 2 tag, or some people might call it 
NFC A tag in more detail later in this course. Let's also take a look at what API is provided by the NFC A tag handler. As you can see, we primarily have a transceive function, and this function accepts raw bytes data as input, also raw bytes data as output. This basically means we have to construct the raw payload in order to use it. That's why we will need to understand these technology-specific protocols, at least to some degree. Oh, by the way, MDEF itself is also considered as an NFC technology. So, it has its own handler, which provides operations such as write MDEF, make read-only, and so on. Okay, let's back to our first app. Since the first app we are building for this module only scans for tag existence, so we only need to use the basic set of API. The end of part will be discussed in the second app, and the technology-specific handlers will be discussed in the third app in this course. Now you have a basic understanding of what included in our NFC library. Let's move on to write some codes. Hello, in this lesson, we will dive into codes. We will show you how to first check NFC availability, then scan for NFC tags. Third, implement our game logic. Okay, I have launched our app in iOS Simulator. So you can see the template code generated by Real Native CLI is running. Let's get rid of it. Create a src directory and a new app.js inside it. Then write some most basic JSX. Just let everything be centered on the screen and say hello NFC. Then go back to the original index.js and point the app from the original one into the new src slash app.js. Then we would like to detect whether the target mobile device has NFC support or not. Let's create a has NFC state. This state has an initial value to be null, which means we are not yet confirmed whether NFC is supported or not. Once we do, this state will be a boolean value true or false. Then we adjust our UI according to this value. Next step is to actually check the NFC availability. By importing the real native NFC manager, we can use the is supported API and it will resolve a boolean value to indicate whether the underlying device supports NFC or not. Since the availability won't change during the whole app lifecycle, we can do this inside a use effect hook with no dependency. This basically simulates the component mount behavior for React class component. And please be aware, the is supported API or most of the APIs for a native module is an async function because our JavaScript code will need to cross the bridge and ask the corresponding native part for the result. We can see the simulator is refreshed and the result is not supported. Let's run the code on a real iOS device. As you can see, the recent iPhone from iPhone 8 all support NFC. Once we can confirm the devices does support NFC, we can do the native module initialization by calling the NFC manager.start function.
Quick review. We just used the is supported API to check the NFC availability. And if the device supports it, we then call start to initialize our NFC native module. It's time to start our actual GAN component. Let's quickly a uh, src slash gan.js. By copying the existing code and removing the unnecessary parts. Then use this GAN component in our app.js when NFC is available. Now we are finally ready to scan NFC tags. First, import NFC Manager and NFC Events from React Native NFC Manager. Then, use Set Event Listener to listen to NFC Events dot Discover Tag event. For now, we just log the message to the console. A small trick here is to use console.warn for logging rather than console.log. So we can see the yellow screen UI pop up without enabling debugger. The actual tag scanning is through the register tag event API. Once it discover any NFC tags, the native side will emit discover tag event with the tag data to JavaScript side. Okay, let's test it on a real device. Please remember, the NFC antenna for an iPhone is on the top of the device. So the proper position to scan a tag is probably like this picture. Now let's scan a tag. Cool, that's indeed something happened. We can see once we hit our start button, the iOS NC prompt pop up, and the icon changed when the tag is scanned. Let's see what's in our warning message there. It's an object which contains a NDEF message property, which is an array. The object in this array contains properties such as payload, type, TNF, and ID. Don't worry about them. We will deep dive into these properties in our next app. Next, let's move the event listener setup and clean up code into an use effect hook. It's about time to write our game logic. The objective of our game is to calculate how much time player needs to scan 5 NFC tags. The shorter times means a better score. First, create a start state to track whether a player hits start button. And our use effect hook should depend on this star state and rerun the hook logic when it is changed. Because in such a case, it basically means the user restart the game. Then we use a variable called count inside the closure of our hook to track the remaining count left for a player to scan. Once the count becomes zero, the game is finished, and we should stop the NFC scanning by calling NFC Manager that unregistered tag event. As well as calculate the total elapsed time. And of course, we will have to also render the duration into React elements. Before testing it on a real device, we noticed one thing, that is, during the game playing, the user cannot see any UI updates. Because the iOS default scan UI is on top 
of our game component in order to provide users some messages during the game playing we can use nfcmanager.setAlertMessageIOS to update iOS NFC scan prompt OK, let's do a final test on the real device again Cool, all works pretty well By the way Personal best record is about 5 seconds. See if you can beat me. In review, Register Tag Event is used to start the detection process of our NFC tags. And the Unregister Tag Event is the method to cancel it. Our callback function is passed through the Set Event Listener function. The event we are looking for is the onDiscover tag event. We can also use setLearnMessageIOS to show some visual cue for our users. That's it for the iOS part. In the next lesson, we will move on to Android. Hello, in this lesson, we will focus on Android side. We will see the difference between Android and iOS and discuss how to provide a similar experience for our NFC game app, the difference between iOS and Android. Let's first run our previous work on a real Android device. As you can see, I have pressed the start button several times, but it looks like there's nothing happened. What's wrong here? Actually, it's nothing wrong. It's because Android provides no built-in NFC scanning UI. So even our app is ready to scan NFC tags. There is no visual cue for our users. So our first step in this lesson is to build a component to mimic the behavior for iOS NFC scanning UI. Let's call it Android Prompt. This component will use React Native's built-in model component to present content above the enclosing view. Inside the model, we place a view and a text with the string hello NFC. Then we set both transparent and visible props to be true for the model component. and also provide some basic styling for our inner view. After the basic setup, let's add our entry prompt component into our app.js. OK, now our entry prompt shows up on the screen. Let's move on to style our content inside the model. The building blocks are a full view component with flex1 as its container and a backdrop inside the container. The actual prompt UI is rendered above the backdrop. And there are two components inside it, one hint text and one cancel button, just like the iOS. Then, the next step is to apply our styles to our components. Oops, it looks like there is something wrong with the backdrop. That's because we haven't applied the position absolute part into it. To write this kind of cover all style, here is a little trick. We can use the stylesheet.absolute field. It's very convenient in such a case. 
The next step is to design the interface between our Android prompt and its parent. Normally in React, we use props passing as the primary interface between components. That's because of React's declarative nature. However, in our case, provide an imperative API set will be much easier. The API we want to expose is something like React Native's built-in alert module for alert. We simply call alert.alert .alert and it will appear. From the caller's perspective, we don't need to preserve a state like is alert visible and pass it as props into alert. We'd like to do something similar for our Android prompt component here. In order to accomplish this, we will use ref. First, wrap the original Android prompt component with react.forwardref. Once a function component is wrapped with forward ref, it will receive a second argument, which is the ref object passing from its parent. Then we create our internal state, visible and hint text. Since those states are within the current component, we need to provide a method to let parent component to access them. We can use an use effect hook to accomplish this inside the hook. If we have a ref object passed in, we can set the current property of the ref object and put our state mutation function inside the current object. So the set visible and set hint text can be used by our parent component. And of course, we should pass our internal visible state into the model component and display our internal hint text state. We also need to toggle the visible state back to false and clear the hint text when the cancel button is pressed. Now it's time to test them. Head back to our app.js. We first call use ref hook to obtain a ref object and pass it into the Android prompt component. Then quickly create a test button. From the test button's unpress handler, we can simply call current dot set visible true. As you can see, we can now toggle our entry prompt component from parent and toggle it off by pressing its own cancel button without tracking the visible state from the parent component. Now is the fun part we'd like to add some animation into our Android prompt component. Import the animated module from React Native. We also need an animated dot value initially set to zero. Then we create a underlying visible state. I will explain this in just a second. For now, just consider that we will use this underlying visible state instead of the previous visible state. Before we dive deeper, here's the thought process of creating animation. The first, what state triggered the animation? For us, that's the underlying visible state. The second, how to update the animated value object according to prior state change. Third, how to update the style using the change in animated dot value object. To handle the first and second question, we create a new use effect hook. Depends on the underlying visible state 
and the anim value object. This hook function will be triggered when underlying visible value changed. And if this value is true, which means we are about to show our component, we first set the visible state to true and use animated.timing to gradually change the anim value from 0 to 1. On the other hand, if the underlying visible is false, which means we are about to hide our component, we need to call animated.timing first, and then toggle the visible state to false in the completion handler, which is the callback passed into the start function. If we use the run order, the model will disappear instantly and no animation at all. That's why we need a second underlying visible state to signal the beginning of a transition. And the visible state is the one actually passed into our model component. After that, we change all the existing set visible into underlying set visible, since its actual usage is to trigger the use effect hook. So we should only call set visible our effect hook. The next step is to update the style using the anim value. First, update the backdrop with the opacity. Test it, and it looks pretty great. Then we can handle the animation for the prompt. The effect we want is a slide up effect. So we do a translate y transform and let the anim value to interpolate from 0 to 1. By the way, always remember only the animated view can have animation style in it, otherwise you will have some trouble. Test it again, and it's awesome. The next step is to use our Android prompt component in our game. First, import it and set up the ref object. Then, when the NFC manager register tag event is called, we should set our Android prompt to be visible by calling Android prompt ref current set visible true. And when the user is playing, we can update the hint tags according to platforms. If it is Android, we will call our custom set hint text function from ref. If it is iOS, we simply call set learn message iOS. Once the game is finished, we should set our Android prompt to be invisible. OK, it seems that we are ready to test it. Before testing, you will need to check the position of NFC antenna for your Android device, because they might be in different places according to different Android manufacturers. It looks pretty good. Though the app seems working correctly, but there's actually a potential bug. That is, once the user presses the cancel button in our Android prompt, 
we won't actually stop the NFC from scanning because our game component is not aware of it. To fix this issue, we first add the uncancel pressed into our Android prompt component and call it when the cancel button is pressed. And then go back to our game component, pass the uncancel press prop into Android prompt component and call unregistered tag event inside it. Besides the system scanning UI, another difference between Android and iOS. That is, NFC can be disabled in Android. So, for Android app, before the game starts, we will need to confirm that the NFC is enabled. Let's do it now. First, create an enabled state. And in our check NFC function, we call NFC manager that is enabled. This API will resolve to a boolean value to indicate whether the NFC is enabled or not. And use this state in our render logic. If the NFC is supported but not enabled, we show a hint to our users and provide a button for the user to jump to NFC system setting by calling NFC manager that go to NFC setting. And please be aware, this API only works on Android. You might wonder, what about iOS? Actually, our NFC that is enabled will always return true since there is no NFC switch for iOS. So we can confirm that the runtime execution flow will never reach here. Finally, we also provide a button to let the user recheck the NFC enable state. It's about time to test our modifications. We first disable NFC and then launch our app. As you can see, our UI hint at users about their NFC state, then hit go to settings to enable NFC, then back to our app again, recheck the state. And now, the user can enter the game. Cool! Now we have a simple but fully functional NFC Tech Counter game app for both Android and iOS. Hello! We have almost finished our final app. It's a good time to review what we have learned so far. First, we learn there are two ways to create a native skeleton project. We also mention how to choose between them. Basically, you will need to understand whether your project depends on third-party library with or without native codes. Then, we learn how to configure a real native project with NFC. For Android, we simply add user's permission into Android manifest.xml and it's done. For iOS, we will have to add NFC tag reading capabilities in both Apple Developer website as well as in our Xcode project. Remember to add the privacy string into info.plist as well. After configuring our NFC project, we install Real Native NFC Manager. We walk you through how to identify the native part in Platform IDE, Esco and Android Studio. We also do a quick review of NFC technology stack. Then, we used API provided from Real Native NFC Manager to implement our tech counter game. Those APIs are is supported, is enabled, start, set event listener, register tag event, unregister tag event, and set alert message iOS. 
please remember that most of these APIs are async functions. After the iOS app, we mentioned that Android provides no system scan UI, so we implemented one from scratch. During this process, there are several fun parts. First, how to use React Ref to construct imperative API, and how to use animated from React Native. Awesome! Before we wrap it up, let's do some final styling to let our NFC game app looks better. That's the fun part, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. In the next module, we will explore NDEF, which is the most widely used data structure for NFC tags. I will see you there.